Hi everyone, Matteo here. Summer is coming. So it's time to start my quest on finding the best iced pour over slash filter coffee method. This is the first of a series of videos where I will share with you my progression on finding the best way to make the most tasty iced filter coffee. So if you don't want to miss my next episodes, you know what to do. Subscribe. Ah. So first of all, for who doesn't know, What's an iced filter coffee? Iced filter coffee, or also called Japanese style iced coffee, it's a method of making iced coffee that involves brewing coffee hot directly over ice. Unlike traditional iced coffee, where hot coffee is brewed first and then chilled, Japanese style iced coffee is made using a pour over method where hot water uh, is poured over coffee grounds directly onto ice, which instantly cools the coffee and locks in its aroma and flavors. The result is a bright, crisp and refreshing iced coffee that highlights the flavors of the coffee beans used. Japanese-style iced coffee is particularly popular in Japan and has gained popularity in specialty coffee shops around the world for its unique and delicious flavor profile. So what you need to make this drink is a dripper. I'm using the Orea V3 basalt for this video, but you can use V60 or any other dripper. You need a server or you can pour the coffee uh, directly in a glass. And also you need ice, water kettle, a scale, basically all the equipment you need to make a pour over. And finally, you need your favorite coffee. Now, two things are very important to consider when we want to make this kind of iced coffee. First, the brewing water ice ratio and second, extract enough solutes from the coffee to create a balanced cup. Let me explain better. When we make ice pour over, the total ratio of water is divided between the hot water to brew the coffee and the ice used to cool down the coffee. Calculating the ratio between brewing water and ice is very important because it plays an active role in the final beverage. Because the ice not only cools down the coffee, but functions as diluent, for the brewed coffee. So if we brew the coffee like we usually do, keeping a traditional coffee to water ratio like 1 to 16, with the ice acting as a diluent, we will end up with, yes, a cold drink, but also a watery coffee too, because the ice melting will drop the strength of the coffee. So we might end up with a balanced cup, but as I said before, very watery. And that's what happens when we make a traditional iced coffee. This goes together with a second very important aspect to take care of, the actual coffee extraction. We know the ice is going to dilute the drink while cooling it down, so the coffee we need to brew must have a high strength. Enough strength to make sure that once all the ice melted, it will be ideal for our tasting preference. That's why for this method we are going to use less water to brew the coffee, because in general with any brewing method the majority of the solutes are extracted in the first part of the brew. So if we cut the brewing water, we will end up with a stronger coffee. Easy, right? And no, there is a catch. Because reducing the water to increase strength can also bring to under extraction. And the result will be a coffee with a good strength, but unbalanced taste, with high acidity and low sweetness. So what we need to do is to increase the extraction, like if we want to brew an over extracted bitter coffee, but avoid in the last part of the extraction by pouring less water. So the best way to do that is to grind finer, increasing contact time and contact surface between coffee and water. Another variable that we can change to increase extraction is the brewing temperature. By increasing the temperature of water, uh, we will extract more salts. But I want to avoid to increase the water temperature because what we need to achieve at the end is a cold coffee. So by increasing the temperature, then we need more ice to cool down the beverage and we might dilute it too much. So grind finer, but keep the same water temperature. Okay, now the method. As a base, I will take the technique I have already posted here on YouTube previously for the large Orea V3. If you haven't checked it yet, I will link it here for you. As I said before, you can also use the V60, no problem. We are going to keep the same uh, coffee dough, 18 grams, but we are going to grind a bit finer. 
I start with um, 22 Commandante regular clicks. Water temperature we keep the same, 93 degrees Celsius. Now for the brewing we're going to use only uh, 210 grams of water, so basically only the first pours of the method, uh, 60 grams for the first pour, 70 grams for the second pour and 80 grams for the third pour. 90 grams is the ice. So if we calculate the percentage between the brewing water and the ice, 70% it will be the brewing water and 30% the ice. This ratio is something that we can modify. For example, uh, increasing the percentage of brewing water, we are going to extract more solids from the coffee, but we will end up with a warmer uh, drink at the end. And if we increase the ice, we will end up with a colder drink, but a slightly less extracted. But for now, we keep 70-30. Before brewing, another thing I want to talk about is how to approach the blooming. Two years ago, I posted on my Instagram page a recipe with a trick that I got from a friend that he got from Japan about letting the yield of the first pour cool down on its own without the thermal shock brought by the ice and this to increase the vibrancy and the brightness of the acidity. Now, in the past weeks, I compared this recipe with and without separating the blooming. The difference I found between the two methods is that uh, by separating the blooming yield, uh, you get more vibrancy and brightness of the acidity. You can really feel it in your mouth, but you also get a thinner body and a less creamy mouthfeel. And for some coffee, the quality of the aftertaste decreased. I can say overall I prefer the method without the uh, blooming yield separation, but I think that is something that you can try at home because the difference is uh, very interesting. Okay, now let's brew some coffee. Let's place 90 grams of ice in the server, coffee in, and let's pour 60 grams of water as a first pour. We let it rest for 40 seconds and then we're going to apply the second pour of 70 grams of water. If you're doing the blooming separation method, of course you would have done the first pour on a separate vessel and switch it with one with the ice right before the 40 second mark. Zero the scale and applying the second pour. Okay, now the second pour, 70 grams of water. When I brew with Kalita paper, I want to make sure I recollect all the ground after every pour, so I give a light swirl. And then a 120, the third and last pour of 80 grams. Ok, now we wait until everything drained. Ok, now the coffee has finished to drain and we let the ice melt. I usually use a teaspoon to speed up the process. If you're doing the blooming separation technique, now is the time to pour the blooming yield together with the rest. Now, the end temperature, I usually get a liquid at 20 degrees Celsius when all the ice has melted. If I use the blooming separation technique, I usually get 15 degrees Celsius, probably because the yield of the first pour cools down by itself, so the ice is uh, able to reduce the final temperature a bit more. Average final TDS uh, with the dilution is around 135-140, that depends on coffee. When I was doing the collection of data, I found that with this method I'm able to achieve an extraction yield of 18-90%, uh, always depending on coffee, but overall pretty balanced. After all the ice is melted, I put the coffee in another glass with more ice. This ice will uh, drop the temperature even more and of course it will drop a bit more the strength but usually I never lose the coating texture. A suggestion is to use a big piece of ice because it will dilute the drink less. You can even cool down the coffee and then remove the ice. Up to you now, be creative. If you want to brew a bigger coffee, you just need to increase the dose, the water and the ice, but always keeping the same proportion. I really hope that you will try this method and achieve a very nice refreshing iced coffee. This is the starting point of my ice filter coffee quest on finding the best method to make it. If you are going to try this method with or without the blooming separation, 
I would like to hear your feedback, so I really appreciate it if you are going to share it with me. If you want to share your favorite ice pour over method, please uh, drop a comment in the section below. I hope you like this video and I can't wait to see you in my next episodes of the saga. In the meantime, I wish you a wonderful day and delicious coffee. Ciao!